Hello friends, welcome to Expert Guidance. Today in this video, we will be covering the topic C, Gases in the Atmosphere of a Section 2 Inorganic Chemistry of a Dexel IGCSE Chemistry. Now in this video, we will be looking over the percentages of all the gases which are present in the atmosphere and how we can experimentally determine the volumes of oxygen in the air. We will also see the combustion of elements in oxygen including magnesium, hydrogen and sulfur. We'll also see the formation of carbon dioxide by thermal decomposition of the metal carbonate. We'll also see the carbon dioxide as a contributor of a greenhouse gas and how carbon dioxide leads to global warming. I recommend you to watch this video till the end because in the end we'll be summarizing this topic along with some important key terms. So let's begin. Now, this is what is the table for the present state of the Earth's atmosphere, and this is very important. You need to memorize this chart. Nitrogen, which come, which is the major chunk of the all the gases present in the atmosphere, is seventy eight percent. Oxygen is twenty one percent. Organ is zero point nine percent. Carbon dioxide is zero point zero four percent, and other gases, other noble gases and traces, they are less than zero point one percent. But this was not the scenario in the Earth's early atmosphere. In the Earth's early atmosphere, carbon dioxide, water, and nitrogen dominated. If you see this graph here, you can see that millions of years before present, the oxygen concentration was too low. And it started to increase gradually. And around 400 million years ago, there was a sudden increase in the concentration. And now it has stabilized to 21%. So in the early atmosphere, there was a volcanic eruption which gave rise to the gases, carbon dioxide, water and nitrogen. The water vapor condensed, drained and formed the ocean. After theory says that the ice comets melted, drained and made the water bodies. And then the stabilized Earth's early atmosphere had no oxygen, no life and it had carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen with ammonia and methane in traces. Now, how the oxygen is evolved? Now, the oxygen has evolved by the process of photosynthesis. Now, what happens if you see that flow chart around 4.6 billion years ago, there were just gases like carbon dioxide, nitrogen, sulfur dioxide. There was a cooling that happened and then the water bodies formed and around 3.7 billion years ago, bacteria developed and when the oceans were formed, the algae were developed which photosynthesized and evolved oxygen and when oxygen evolved, the animals evolved. And then now the present atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% the other gases. So around 3.7 billion years ago, simple organisms like bacteria that converts chemical into energy were evolved. But around 2.7 billion years ago, algae and bacteria that can photosynthesize evolved. Then plants evolved, which increased the concentration of oxygen, sustaining life. And then the plant colonized sea and land, and then the animals evolved. Now, what has caused the decrease of carbon dioxide? The carbon dioxide was used up by the plants in photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide got locked up in the rocks when the dead plants and animals died and decayed and they formed sedimentary rocks in fossil fields. And carbon dioxide locked up in the sea also formed fossil fuels like coal and natural gas. Okay, so you should be able to write in the exam how the oxygen concentration increased and how carbon dioxide concentration decreased. And this give rise to the present state, which is 78, 21 and 1. Now, what is why the nitrogen content is higher? The nitrogen content is higher because the nitrogen is very stable and unreactive gas. It is released in large amount by early volcanic activities. And ammonia and methane, which were released in small quantities, it reacted to give oxygen. It reacted with oxygen to form nitrogen and carbon dioxide. And this nitrogen being unreactive built up in the atmosphere. Now, the important thing that is a very high these days is the greenhouse effect. Now, what is greenhouse effect? Now, greenhouse effect we have already covered in ecology and biology as well. And we did that in uh, a few of the biology topics that some solar radiation that comes into the Earth's surface is reflected back. And there's a blanket of the greenhouse gases and the greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, 
water vapor remember it's not water it's water vapor and methane they form a blanket around the earth's atmosphere and does not allow these radiation to go out so in this way they increase the earth's temperature and make it possible for the living organisms to live but Due to rapid urbanization, industrialization, and deforestation, the level of carbon dioxide has increased to a great extent, and that has caused an increase in the global temperature, causing the global warming, and it is causing flooding of the ice caps, change in seasonal pattern, temperature change, habitat loss, and it's causing a lot of environmental problems. So global warming causes an effect is, it causes climate change, habitat loss, floods, change in the migration of birds, change in distribution of plants and animals, change in seasonal pattern, loss of biodiversity causing extinction of species. So you can see that the Earth's temperature has risen about one degree Fahrenheit in the last century and the past so years of warming has been attributed to human activity because of the burning fuels such as coal, natural gas and oil produce greenhouse gases in excessive amount and greenhouse gases are emission that rise into the atmosphere and traps the sun energy keeping heat energy from escaping and most of the world's emissions are attributed to rapid industrialization. And some predictions for local change include increasingly hot summers and intense thunderstorms. Damaging storms, droughts, and release weather phenomenon cause an increase in economic and health problem. Warmer weather provides breeding grounds for insects such as malaria carrying mosquitoes. So these are all the consequences and you should be able to write them in the exam. Now what is the solution for that? The solution for that is reducing the carbon footprint. Now what is a carbon footprint? Carbon footprint is the total amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that are released in any of the product or services. So, how we can reduce the carbon footprint? First, we can find the alternative sources of energy to reduce the dependency of fossil fuels so that we can cut down the carbon dioxide emission. Then we can use biofuels to uh, make the fuels because biofuels are carbon neutral because biofuels also burn and release carbon dioxide. But since they are plant-based, then the plant-based products they have already used up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and the same amount of carbon dioxide they're releasing so they're not adding any extra carbon store or the very important and very hot thing now is carbon capture and storage so what do we do in a power station when the carbon dioxide is released we pump them underground in the rocks so carbon capture and storage where carbon dioxide released from power station is pumped underground into the rocks to cut down the emission or there's a carbon sequestration which is the process of collecting carbon dioxide in the solid and the liquid forms you can see in this diagram the carbon dioxide rather than being getting dispersed we are putting them down into depositing them into the rocks or pumping them into the oceans okay so i hope this process of reducing carbon footprints is clear to you now air pollution it's a similar topic as we did in ecology and biology air pollution the fossil fuels are burning they have sulfur nitrogen and carbon they release sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is causing global warming and greenhouse effect we have already discussed that whereas sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide it combines with rainwater and form acid rain and these acid rain is making the soil acid damaging trees corroding the buildings and to prevent them we should decrease the use of fossil fuels treat the waste to remove nitrogen and sulfur before evolving and use alternative sources of energy now these carbon and nitrogen uh, and sulfur the mixture of nitrogen dioxide and sulfur oxide they form particulates in the lower atmosphere you can see some dimming effect at times now this dimming effect is depleting the ozone layer and it is also lowering the earth's temperature and it is also causing damage to the lungs and other cardiovascular problems okay so i hope this topic is clear to you a very short sweet and a simple topic now you should be aware of all these key terms atmosphere fossil fuels sedimentary rock greenhouse effect global warming climate change carbon footprint combustion particulates global dimming, combustion, and incomplete combustion. You can pause this video, have a go over these terms, and then come back and check the answers. Okay, now as always, what is our next step? Our next step is to check the specification, make sure everything in this topic is crystal clear to you, and then you should do exam questions on this topic, which can be found on my website. The link is shared with you in the description box below. All these notes, 
and this video can also be found on my website i've shared the link with you in the description box below if you like this video then do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to like comment and share this video also do click on the bell icon because it will notify you whenever i'll put up a new video if you still have any doubts in any of this topic you can leave a comment below or you can come to my website where we have a 24 seven chat support to help you through your exams. You can come anytime, post any queries and get instant reply. Okay. And if there's any specific uh, topic you want me to put a video on in this way, then also leave a comment below. I'll make sure I'll put that up before your exam. So I'll see you next in the next video. Till then, happy revising.